ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد uh, in order to begin and to discuss the topic that you have uh, come today to listen to. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say first and foremost uh, that we thank all of you who have attended uh, and that we uh, commend you for attending, particularly uh, attending a gathering like this one, as controversial as the topic is, uh, and you know, with the uh, the atmosphere that we have that is present right now around the likes of these issues, then uh, we commend all of the brothers and the sisters and the ladies and the gentlemen who have attended, and we hope uh, that uh, you will leave with something from benefit uh, and something from an understanding or a, or a better understanding of the issue. As far as myself is concerned, then my name is Bilal Davis. Uh, I uh, am a Muslim convert or revert as we like to refer to that for we believe as Muslims that the Muslim uh, is one that submits his will to the will of the creator and that every individual is born having or born in submission to his creator that is that until he is taught to do certain things then he naturally carries out that which he as a baby and as a child uh, that which he was created to carry out. And so he submits to the will of the Creator as a child uh, and he is removed from that by being taught other than that which pleases our Lord the Most High. And thus the one who embraces Islam and returns back to that submission and the one who turns his attention back to submitting his will to his Creator, we believe that he has not converted in actuality, he's reverted back to that which he was originally born upon, and that is submission to the will of God. And so I was an individual who was born into a Christian family <clears throat> uh, and grew as a Christian child, being of Af Afro-Caribbean background, uh, and coming from a particularly uh, hard and dangerous area in Birmingham, as most children and most youth uh, who reach their teenagers, yani the teenage years, uh, I was involved in that which many of the youth get involved with, uh, guns and gangs and drugs and what have you. Being involved in that for a period and leaving that which I was raised upon and nurtured upon as a Christian, no doubt displeasing my parents, displeasing my family, uh, uh, I was, as far as I was concerned, a victim of circumstance. That it just so happened that I lived in a particular area and I lived in a particular region. Uh, that region uh, forced me, I believed, to fall into and to have the type of company that I had and likewise uh, to embark upon some of the acti activities that we embarked upon and we won't go into detail concerning that. Uh, for a period I remained upon that during my teenage years and then uh, Allah the Most High from His wisdom placed upon me a situation and that is that I was incarcerated for a period because of some gang related activities and that I believe ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters were the beginnings of my guidance or of my path towards guidance and towards rectifying myself and my state. Because while I was incarcerated, I had the ability to read and to study and to reflect upon myself and upon life. And likewise, uh, being an individual that was not unintelligent, uh, I was able similarly to reflect upon various uh, issues and various religions and various things that I was looking into and studying at that time. 
uh, upon that, and upon that, uh, during that period of reflection, I came across some books that were written by an individual, uh, or a group rather, known as the Nation of Islam. And those of you who may be acquainted with the Nation of Islam may or may not know that the Nation of Islam are in actuality not uh, an Islamic organization, as the, or even though they use the name uh, the Nation of Islam. But they are an organization who, in actuality, are pro-black, pa pan-African organization that utilize uh, the Qur'an because of the fact that, particularly in America, uh, the bulk of those who uh, were from or from the uh, uh, African-American communities have respect for Islam and respect for the Qur'an. And so they utilize Islam and some of the verses from uh, the Qur'an to say that no doubt the black man is not only a human being, but the black man is actually in actuality God, incarnate. And that each and every black person uh, is in actuality a part of God. And that the white man is the devil. And that, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you may love when we took it very seriously. That the white man is the devil. And they use some verses in the Qur'an uh, to substantiate that. And they mention from those verses, there is a verse when Allah the Most High, He mentions that uh, in reference to the Day of Judgment, the day that we will bring forth the mujrimun, will bring forth the criminals, zurqa, blue-eyed. And so they utilize that to say it's clear. That the criminals in the Mujrimun, they were the white man, they are the white man. And they will be punished on the day of judgment uh, on the basis of their criminality. And this verse substantiates that for they will be blue eyed. And this was something that we were reading and looking into, uh, and it was something that uh, caught our attention. No doubt uh, the effect did not last. For indeed, we came across other verses of myself, speaking about myself personally, wherein Allah the Most High mentions, يَوْمَ تَسْوَدْ وُجُوهُمْ وَبِيَضَّتْ وُجُوهُ And the day that some faces will be whitened, and some faces will be blackened. And as far as those whose faces are blackened, then it will be said to them, have you disbelieved after Belief has come to you. Taste then the punishment of your disbelief. And so that sort of put a bit of a spanner uh, in the uh, works of that which we initially started looking into. And it no doubt diametrically opposed the concept of every white man being in the hellfire and every black man not only being in paradise but being uh, a part of God. And so we continue to study myself, I continue to study and look around uh, the issue of that which was present within the Qur'an. Because I found that the message that was present within the Qur'an was the most attractive. I was well acquainted with the Bible growing as a Christian, going to uh, Bible studies and uh, Sunday school and so on. I was well acquainted with the Bible, but the message of the Qur'an was particularly attractive to me. So I continue to study and to read. And I realized a number of things, and I discovered a number of things that I didn't believe and understood and knew about the Qur'an and the religion of Al-Islam. From that is that I discovered that the Muslims believe in one God, and that God is not a man, and that that God has the most beautiful names and attributes, and that that was the God of all of the prophets and the messengers. That it was the God of Abraham who I discovered Muslims believe in. The God of Jesus who I discovered Muslims believe in. The God of Ismail. The God of Ishaq, Isaac, who I discovered Muslims believe in. The God of Job. The God of Yunus, Joseph. The God of Lot. The God of all of those prophets and messengers that I was acquainted with. Growing up as a child, reading the Bible and studying the Bible, uh, and going to Bible school. Similarly, 
I discovered that the Prophet Muhammad in actuality was not worshipped by the Muslims. And that he as far as Muslims believe, and as far as the Quran teaches, that he is the seal of the Prophets and the Messengers, and that his message is one and the same. As all of those Prophets and Messengers that came before, Ibudullah, مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرُ Worship Allah, you have no God but He. I realize that the Muslims, and they do not worship idols. As I used to believe, I thought Muslims were worshippers of, of idols. And that they do not worship except the one God that we as Christians used to refer to as the Father. And that they believe that any individual that disbelieves in Jesus and denies Jesus, then he no doubt is not and cannot be considered a Muslim. And similarly, I went on to discover that from the belief of the Muslims is that contrary to that which I was taught, they believe that there is not a prophet and a messenger that can be referred to as God or a part of God or the Son of God. And that includes Jesus. And that Jesus himself, as we study and we come across in the Bible even, that he called his followers to worship his father, or as we find being referred to in the Bible. Uh, and as Muslims, that we do not accept the fact that God is to be referred to as the father, for indeed that is a, an earthly description, rather that our Lord the Most High, Allah, is the one God that Jesus called to and highlighted that I have not come to destroy the law, and the law that is of Moses, the first of which being here, O Israel, your God is one God. You should not have any, make any graven images of anything that walks in the land, flies in the sky, or swims in the sea. And so I started to discover that Islam had with it something from clarity and something from a purity of issues that I had problems with growing uh, as a child or as a young uh, Christian boy. And so I began and continued to study. And when I looked into the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, I realized that he was not Pakistani as I used to believe. In actuality, no disrespect to Pakistanis that is, but in actuality he was uh, an Arab and that he was from the lineage of Abraham and that his lineage goes back to Abraham from his son Ismail and that he was born during a time of turmoil, and during a time that polytheism was widespread and that he was illiterate. And that this illiterate man began to claim, or this illiterate man that was referred to as the trustworthy by his people, began to call to the fact that he was sent as a prophet and, a, and as a messenger. And that how could this individual who was known for a period of 40 years as trustworthy, as truthful, as upright, as one that never lied, why would he now begin to lie against God? Likewise, being an illiterate man, how could this illiterate man produce a book that has literary excellence as the Quran does? A book that is excellent in regards to eloquence and has reached the peak of uh, literary excellence. So these are all issues that I began to look into and study. And I looked into his life. And I looked into the fact that he called to the most noble character, the most noble manners, that he called to justice, to uprightness, that he called to the feeding of the poor and taking care of them, that he called to the removal of oppression, and that he called the people to, to, uh, to uh, 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 clarify that which they were upon by way of worship of other than one God 
and in actuality purify their worship and concentrate that worship to uh, their Lord and their Creator Allah. That he didn't call to himself. Rather, that he called to the Creator and that throughout the whole of the Qur'an his name is mentioned on five occasions. And so I began to think and discuss why. If this was a man that wrote a book so that he would be followed or so that he uh, could gain something from material possession, why would he only mention himself in the book on five occasions? And so all of this turned me towards the religion of Islam and I began to study it and eventually it became clear to me that this was not in actuality uh, the writings of some desert Arab. Rather this was the revelation that was sent, the final revelation and the seal of all the books that were sent to us from our Lord the Most High. And so I became a Muslim somewhere in the region of 1990-1991 and I continued to study the religion of Islam there and after. The reason I mention that to you brothers and sisters is because of the fact that when we hear in our time about Islam and we, we hear about the Muslims and even when we hear the term Muslim it has now almost become a dirty word. It has almost become a swear word. And it is one that when it is heard, we have looks of disdain and immediately certain images come to most people's minds. Those images, no doubt, were not the images that came to my mind when I was looking into Islam as I embraced Islam before uh, those uh, occurrences or people started to uh, consider blowing themselves up at a noble deed before airplanes were flown into buildings before tube stations were set upon prior to that period and prior to all of these actions being attributed to Islam uh, I embraced Islam and became a Muslim uh, at a time when there was none of this controversy generally. So now I find myself in a position where we have to discuss the likes of these issues to a crowd of men and women, individuals who I believe have come to inform themselves or to be educated somewhat concerning the true position of Islam concerning terrorism, extremism, uh, and suicide bombings and uh, these types of affairs. First and foremost, let me say that the religion of Al-Islam, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, is a religion that is upon what is known as the wasat. It is upon, or it is a balanced religion. And that is, it is between extremism and negligence. It is against extremism on the one hand and it is similarly against negligence on the other hand. And that it is a balanced way. Allah the Most High mentions in the Quran Allah mentions that verily we have made you a balanced nation that is between extremism and between negligence, that you may be a witness over the people and that the Prophet may be a witness over you. And this affair of this nation, and the followers of Muhammad being a witness over the people, is explained in a narration that our messenger informed us of concerning the Day of Judgment. And that is on the Day of Judgment, Nuh, Noah, peace and blessings be upon him, who was denied and who had his message rejected for a period of 950 years, as Allah informs us in the Quran, that when his people will be called and they will be questioned concerning what took place with Nuh, what took place with Noah, 
and their rejection of him. They will deny that they rejected him. And then Noah will be asked, and do you have any witnesses? Do you have any that will bear witness to the fact that you conveyed the message? And he will say and respond, the nation of Muhammad, that nation that received the book, that informed of that which took place. And so they will be called and witness will be borne by them of the fact that Nuh, Noah certainly conveyed the message. And so Allah the Most High refers to this nation as a balanced nation between extremism and between negligence. Likewise, we have in the Quran a number of verses. From them, we have the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah mentions, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ That Allah wants ease for you and He does not want to burden you. Allah Azza wa Jalla likewise mentions, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَن يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Allah wants to lighten the, the load from you, lighten the burden from you. For indeed, mankind was created weak. Likewise, we have the statement of the Messenger of Allah, many statements. The lights of his statement, the Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, إِنَّ الدِّينَ يُسْرِ وَلَنْ يُشَادَ دِينَ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا غَلَبًا فَسَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا That indeed the religion is ease. Yani this religion of Islam is an easy religion. And no one overburdens himself concerning this religion except that it overpowers him. Likewise, we have the statement of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. هَلَكَ الْمُتَنَطِّعُونَ هَلَكَ الْمُتَنَطِّعُونَ هَلَكَ الْمُتَنَطِّعُونَ that he mentioned indeed those who go beyond bounds, those who go into extremes will be destroyed. That is, they'll destroy themselves. Those who go into extremes will be destroyed. Those who go into extremes will be destroyed. And on an occasion, three individuals came to the household of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And they asked concerning, or they asked his family and his wives, concerning how he was. How was his worship at home? How was he uh, uh, in the house? And so when they explained, when the wives of the messenger, or when, one of the, when the wife of the messenger explained, to those individuals how he was they responded this was the messenger if this was how he was then how can we be like this the first said as far as me then I am going to pray all night and I'm not going to sleep I'm going to abandon sleep the second said as far as me then I am going to fast all day and I'm not going to break my fast the third said, as far as myself, then I am not going to marry women. I'm going to practice celibacy. And so when the messenger Muhammad heard of their statement, he gathered the believers and gave a sermon. And he said, ما بال أقوامين? He said, what is it? Or why is it that some people say such and such and such and such? He said, as for me, then I pray and I sleep. He said, I fast and I break my fast. And I marry. He mentioned, وَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي And whosoever therefore seeks other than my path, then he is not of me. And that is that the messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, Warn them against extremism. Warn them against going beyond bounds in affairs. For indeed, never is it something that is praiseworthy. Similarly, we have the statement of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, who mentioned, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْغُلُوْ فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ الْغُلُوْ he said, be aware of extremism. For indeed, those who came before you were destroyed by way of extremism. Going into extremes. 
And so Allah the Most High, He mentions addressing the people of the book. Those who received revelation and scripture before, but went beyond bounds. From those who uh, 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 affiliate themselves with Christianity and Judaism. Allah mentions in the Quran, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, La taghlu fi dinikum ghayr al-haqq. Allah mentions, O people of the book, do not go into extremes in relation to your religion other than that which is correct and true. And Allah the Most High likewise speaks about a type or the practice of some of the monks, innovative practices that was not prescribed upon them. Allah mentions, that Allah mentions, but this practice that they fell into, becoming monks and uh, practicing or going into extremes in regards to certain affairs, celibacy and what have you, ma katabnaha alayhim. We did not prescribe that for them. Illa bitigha Rather, we prescribed that they should seek the good pleasure of their Lord. But they did not observe that in its correct way and in its correct manner. That is, they went be unbound in regards to that which Allah the Most High sought from them uh, when He commanded them to draw close to Allah by way of worship and so on. And so extremism, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, as far as the religion of Islam is concerned, is something that constantly we find a warning against that in all of its manifestations. No doubt, when we hear the term extremism though in our time, then it is a reference ordinarily to individuals who ascribe themselves to the path and the way of an earlier group that began and that appeared in the early part of Islam close to the time of the death of Muhammad وسلم, and who went into extremes shortly after his death. And they were a group known as the Khawarij. And they were a sect that deviated away from the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And their leader, the initial individual that started their group, or that was considered the founder of their group, was an individual that appeared at the time of the messenger himself. An individual known as Dhul Khawaisira. And he appeared during the time of the messenger Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. When the messenger was uh, separating and dividing some of the spoils of war. And he rose and stood. And said, I'dil ya Muhammad. He said, be just O Muhammad. For indeed this separating of the spoils of war was something that did not have in it justice. And that is, that some of the wealth that the messenger gave, he gave to an individual from amongst the non-Muslims. Some of that spoils, of some of those spoils, were given, was given to an individual from among the non-Muslims. So he was displeased by that, from amongst other things, and said, I'dil ya Muhammad, be just, O Muhammad. For indeed, this is not justice. This separating of yours and this division does not have in it justice. And so, when one of the companions wished to discipline that individual, as he turned to walk away, the messenger said, leave him. For indeed, this individual will have here and after companions and followers. You will compare your prayer to their prayer. And you will compare your fasting to their fasting. And you will consider your fasting and your prayer irrelevant. But they will go in and out of the religion as an arrow goes through its game. And the messenger described them as being individuals asna, young in age, foolish. He described them as being a people who were bloodthirsty and given to killing. He described them as being a set of individuals who he mentioned, if I come across them, 
then verily I will take care of them. And, and then he went on to explain that the one who is killed by them is the best individual that is killed under the sun. And is the noblest of individuals. So the messenger described the fact that these individuals will occur, that they would appear, and described in detail the characteristics and what we are to expect from them. And just as the messenger predicted those individuals occurred and appeared, soon after the death of the messenger Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, they fought and waged war against one of the uh, the uh, uh, successors of the Prophet Muhammad Ali they fought and waged war against him and they eventually assassinated him and that Ali who was the leader at that time remembering what the messenger informed him of that he fought against them uh, just as uh, he was advised and just as we have narrations from our messenger informing of the fact that when they appear that they should be fought against. And that when they appear, they should be fought against. And that the one who is killed by them is the best of those who are killed. And the one who fights against them is the best of those who fight against a people. And so, these individuals who are known as the Khawarij, we find a recurrence of their appearing in our time. Individuals who declare people heretics or infidels on the basis of them carrying out major sins. Individuals who do not set only upon non-Muslims to take and to spill blood, but even upon Muslims. Those who you would believe they would declare their brother man and brothers in faith, even Muslims, who do not agree with them. Then we find them setting upon them and killing them uh, uh, or attempting to do so. For indeed they declare anyone who does not agree with them individuals who are non-Muslims and have left the fold of Al-Islam. So these individuals are not uh, uh, a group that is new to the Muslimun and in fact we have been in uh, and have had confrontations with them for somewhere in the period of 20 years now, prior to September the 11th, prior to 7-7, uh, before they were uh, in the press, or before they were being, you know, this issue was being discussed. Now, we were in confrontation with these individuals for somewhere in the region, and their ideology, for somewhere in the region of 20 or more years, Tackling their ideology, tackling their belief, standing against that which these individuals uh, uh, spread and that which they propagate, defiling the true pristine message of Al Islam, that message that is the continuation and the seal of the message of all of the prophets and the messengers. And no doubt, our brother. Abu Khadija, who is about to speak after me, will go into further detail concerning the group, concerning that which they are upon, and concerning the true Islamic position concerning them. But it should be said and it should be known that when we analyze the prophets and the messengers, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we see that the prophets and the messengers did not in any way have the attitude that these individuals had. And an example of that is that which we saw during the time of Moses, Musa. That Moses on an occasion, and I'll finish with this, Moses on an occasion, as we find in the Quran, he was on an occasion called upon by one of his followers who was being attacked by one of the non-Muslims, and one of the armies of the Fir'aun. And so that follower of Moses called upon Moses in order to help him against this individual who was attacking him. So Musa, Moses, came to his aid. 
And he struck that individual. And he killed him. The intent of Moses was not to kill him. But that individual, he struck him. Seeking to help and support his follower, he struck him. And accidentally he killed that individual. The response of Musa, and the response of Moses, when that individual was killed, was not that he said, well, he was an aggressor anyway, and I am Moses, the prophet of God, and he was a non-believer in any case, and his blood is worthless and doesn't mean anything. Rather, we find Allah mentioning and informing us of the fact that Musa said in response to that, and after that, هَذَا مِنْ عَمَلِ shaitan. He said that indeed this is from the works of shaitan, from the works of the devil. And as long as I live, I will never again be an aider of the mujrimun. I will never again be one that aids the criminals. And remember the story, brothers and sisters. Musa killing an individual accidentally. Him being one receiving revelation. Him being one that is supported and aided by God. Yet, when he killed that individual, he said that indeed this is from the works of the devil. And never again will I be one that supports the criminals. Referring to that individual that was from his followers. Never again will I be one that supports the criminals. So brothers and sisters, Islam and the Muslims are against extremism in every way, shape or form. All of its manifestations. Islam does not support criminality. It does not aid criminality. It does not aid transgression and aggression against individuals and the taking of innocent life. Just as that was not the case with the prophets and the messengers. That is similarly not the case with the followers of the prophets and the messengers. And those who ascribe to the religion of our messenger Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Uh, and uh, on that note, uh, we'll round up and allow our brother to continue uh, with a discussion of this most important affair. And likewise this most uh, 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 treacherous group, the Khawarij. والله تعالى أعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك